Kevin Kernan is, is with us, the outstanding columnist, well-regarded columnist, longtime columnist with the New York Post, and has been on our show many times over the years. Kevin, Roger Weiland with you. Good morning. Good morning, Roger. How are you doing? Today? Good, Kevin. I appreciate a few minutes, as always. Let's uh, We'll get to the Mets and DeGrom and all of that, but how about this Yankee team? I know they're not going to get there, but is, is the table set with guys like Gary Sanchez for a bright future for this Yankee team? Well, I think it's going to be a better future. It's about time they started using their young players. You know, my question is, what took them so long to call Gary Sanchez up? You know, I've seen Gary Sanchez at two or three Futures games, and it was always the same story. You could tell he was a guy that was bored, Roger. And um, and I think uh, I think what we're seeing now is a guy who's uh, who's really just relaxed, playing his game, and is becoming a clubhouse leader a little bit too. But there's still a long way to go for the Yankees. And I wrote about it the other day. They're going to have to have patience with these young guys. Yeah, there's no doubt, and I do agree with you. I mean, it's it maybe even an earlier call up from a guy like Gary Sanchez. Is there any question in your mind? I mean, it's still a small sample size, and I know we and I tend to do the same thing, kind of overhype somebody. But are we overhyping Gary Sanchez, or is he this good? I don't know if he's this good, but he's certainly um, not overhyped. I think he's deserved it. And not, let me point to little things. I'm not just some writer that this about. You know, there's too many of those guys out there. I actually watched the game, uh, and, and he, even the other day, he made he had two at bats where he looked. There was one time where he looked really bad. Um, uh, you know, uh, first time up, strikes out on three pitches. Next uh, next time up, homers. Uh, Ziegler, the reliever for the Red Sox, makes him look really bad. One day, the next day, he gets up there, he, he crushes the ball off him. So Gary Sanchez is making tremendous adjustments. Has a very calm, simple swing. I don't see a lot can go wrong with that. My question, Roger, is being a catcher, you're going to get beat up. Your hands are going to get hurt. It's going to affect your hitting. I really think what the Yankees should really think to do in the future, depending on what they can do with the catching position, but I really think they should consider him as a, you know, he's the next DH in my mind. Why not just DH him in the future? I think he's very comfortable with that position. Catch him on occasion, but don't wear him out on catching. And I think, uh, that's a danger zone for Gary Sanchez. No, uh, he's been he's been awfully fun to watch, uh, Kevin. It, the, I give the Yankees credit because they, they they made the moves at the trading deadline. I don't think many Yankee fans thought at this point in the season we'd even be able to be talking about maybe a possible postseason berth. But really, up until that Red Sox series, we were. But I. Uh, in my opinion, Kevin, as soon as they lost the way they did in Game One of the Boston series, that was the end of it. You agree? Totally agree. I wrote it at the time. Been around too long to see those kind of losses get away. I thought I thought I thought Girardi had a terrible series, and I wrote that, and he had a terrible first game. I mean, you're going to try to stay away from Dylan Patanzas. I totally get that, but there's absolutely no gut feeling in Girardi's moves. Tommy Lane comes in that day, strikes out a, uh, the batter on three pitches, and it's automatically out because lefty righty, lefty right. He's playing with a three run lead. I thought it was a, a, a critical game. And it's going to be very, you know, it has to be like collapsing of four of the teams for them to get there. And uh, obviously, I, I thought that finished them. And then the Red Sox, you know, the Yankees are, what are they, 5 and 11 against the Red Sox this year. And when the Blue Jays were playing well, they weren't playing well against the Blue Jays either. So the Yankees still have to make that jump. It's one thing to beat, you know, Tampa stinks. So many teams, and you know, you've had me on a lot, Roger. I, I get very frustrated by seeing these teams that are run by. Uh, GMs that just look at numbers and they think they know everything. Tampa's a great example of an, an organization going backwards and backwards. And, uh, and, and, you know, for the Yankees to beat Tampa, I don't get too excited. Uh, but they have, they have, they have a long, I still think the Yankees have a ways to go, especially, especially in the pitching department. I think they're really shy on pitchers. I, I was pushing for the Yankees on June 6th, and you know you had me on the show then. June 6th, I said the Yankee season was basically they need to re, re, retool and bring up the young guys. They didn't do it until it was way too late, and look what's happened. Uh, Kevin Kernan with us, uh, well-regarded, longtime uh, columnist, New York Post, with us here on Big Board Sports. We follow Mike and Mike and take you right up to Han and Humpty Monday through Friday here. Kevin, how about this Red Sox team? Uh, win again last night. They're up five now. Certainly looks like they're going to win the American League East. This is a Boston team that's had quite the turnaround and certainly a team that could win the World Series. Yeah, I really like the Red Sox on a couple levels, Roger. I, you know, I think John Farrell does a good job. 
Is he the greatest X and O guy? No, but he's a lot like Terry Collins in the way the guys play hard for him. And, um, you know, he gives you thoughtful answers when you ask him a question. He's just not, uh, he's not a robot. And Ortiz, I've been an Ortiz fan for a long time. Because, you know, I go to his event in, in Punta Cana in the offseason. I've done that twice. I get to see him away from the field. And then you got guys like Mookie Betts, who to me is, uh, he's MVP. And, uh, you know, it's a fun team to watch. They, they really believe in themselves. Um, do they have enough pitching? We'll see what happens there. Some guys got to step it up. Uh, but it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, I would love to see Ortiz, uh, you know, kind of get to the World Series is last year. That'd be kind of fun. Yeah. 36 home runs now. Last night's the, uh, most by, by a player in his last season. And the poppy has uh, been impressive along with 121. RBIs, they win in Baltimore 5-2. Uh, let me uh, skip ahead to the National League and to the Mets, who, Kevin, they, they don't want to make it easy on themselves, to, do they, with uh, sure. the series so far against the Atlanta Braves dropping the first two games? Yeah, you know, I said that last night. They don't make anything easy. They don't take advantage of uh, things they should. And here's the problem now, Roger. I was just looking at it because I'll be there tonight. And, uh, over his last 19 games, Cespedes has, uh, is hitting 208 with a 361 slugging percentage. And Jay Bruce, who's mm. really uh, just a complete lost cause, he's hitting over his 35, last 35 games, 172 with 254. If the middle of your lineup isn't going to produce runs, how are you going to win? And even if they get to the playoffs, how are they going to make it make it dent? So so they got uh, they have big issues. They come a long way. They're hung in there. I give them credit. But really, unless, uh, unless Cespedes, Cespedes has gotten crazy. You know, he's gotten a little too home run happy, swinging from his heels on everything. He's got to really get back to hit, going, hitting the ball uh, off fields and suddenly up the middle a little bit more, and uh, that would have made a difference last night. And the Braves, I will say this though too. I've, you know, I, I've said I've been watching the Braves very closely. They've made some interesting little moves. If they could get a power hitter, they would be a very interesting team. And if I'm a guy like Cespedes, uh, this may sound crazy, but this is why you have me on. Sometimes I throw some things out there. If I'm the Braves, I go really, if Cespedes goes, uh, free agent, if I'm the Braves, I go really hard for Cespedes next year. I think he could be a difference maker for that organization. We, we love when you get crazy with your thoughts, Kevin. That, that is, that is a reason why I reach out to you from, from time to time on Twitter. Uh, a, uh, yeah, and Cespedes, by the way, looked, looked awful in that final strikeout last night. Wait, was that a curveball from uh, Jim Johnson? And and he was trying to to swing out of his shoes and hit the home run, and it, it certainly didn't it didn't come out so well. No, he hit, you know, he's got a good hit. Jim Johnson's got a sinker back, and that makes a difference. And I will say, it was a good curveball. It was a good curveball. But if you're not taking that kind of swing, you foul that pitch off and hope for a better pitch. But I think he's getting a little... You know what I think is really happening here, Roger? If he cuts down cut everything apart. He knows he's going to be a free agent. He wants to get the 90, there's certain numbers in his head where he wants to get to like 35 homers and 95 ribbies or whatever. Um, and I think that's affecting his play for the team. All right. J Jacob deGrom uh, is going to have the uh, ulnar surgery and repair his uh, ulnar nerve. He's yeah, the good news is it's a, it's it's only a three month recovery, so he'll be ready for spring training. But now, even moving forward, even if the Mets get there, Kevin, now you've got Syndergaard who did not have a good outing last time out this uh, two nights ago. Uh, you have him and you have Bartolo Colon. Now you got Degrom. I don't think Stephen Matz is going to make it back. I think he's going to shut it down too for the rest of the season. That starting rotation uh, th that would be very difficult for them to make any kind of a deep run, even if they get to the playoffs with the. The way that rotation is right now, it's going to be very difficult. Max is saying that he's going to come back and pitch uh, Friday. Maybe we'll see. Um, but he's had one little thing after another, so I'm concerned about him. Is can he handle this? This, this, uh, you know, the the injury, the way you feel as a major league pitcher, you never feel right. Seems to me like he can't handle that right now. I'm very, 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 and I can't say very enough concerned about the Grom, simply because. Um, you know, he had the Tommy John surgery. This is what happens, you know, eight, nine years out after Tommy John surgery. You start having other issues in the arm. And, uh, you know, that we were told too that Wheeler would be back and look where he is. So, you know, this is a, a lot of, a lot, a lot of issues for the Mets. It's kind of sad because I would have loved to see this pitching staff stay together and be something. And, uh, next year, just think what spring training is going to be like, Roger. You're going to be going from one player to the next about their comeback tours. 
And I think uh, I think fans are tired of hearing all that too, because I know I'm tired of writing it. I'll be I'll be running from David Ray to you know to to the first baseman to this pitcher to that pitcher. You know, it's just, just too many question marks. And the Mets, uh, unfortunately, they should have had a uh, you know they should have had a great pitching staff for for quite a few years, but uh, because of a variety of reasons. Uh, it has not worked out that way. Hey, Kevin, one more and I'll let you go. Is Terry Collins the manager of the Mets in spring training? He better be because he's done an unbelievable job. If he isn't, you're going to read some, you're going to read some columns in the New York Post and over on Twitter at Where's Kernan just destroying the Mets for the way they treated him. Kevin, always a pleasure. Thanks for a few minutes and uh, I'm sure we'll be back in touch, but uh, thanks for coming on Big Board Sports on this Wednesday morning. Anytime, Roger. Thanks for the you time. Got, you got it, man. Kevin Kernan, uh, you read the uh, New York Post. Uh, he's been writing columns for a very long time, and he and his his columns at this time of the year are always baseball, Yankees, and Mets. He covers both teams, and uh, 